Dennis Goodchild here. Welcome to this short video on listening, which will last about five minutes. So how can being a good listener help you as a leader? The first thing is you will become a better leader. Leadership is about change and the main tool for change is communication. So to be an effective communicator, you need to be a very good listener. Ask yourself this question. How often do you prepare to listen? when you're going to have a conversation in comparison to preparing a presentation or for an interview or in other words when you're going to talk. The second way being a good listener will help you as a leader is that you will be more influential. A fundamental human need is to be seen and heard. In his multi-million best-selling book Seven Habits of Highly Effective People Stephen Covey emphasizes the point by talking about one of his seven habits being seek first to understand, then be understood. Seek first to understand and then be understood. Showing somebody that you have listened to them will make them more open to listen to you. The third way being a good listener will help you as a leader is that you'll end up making smarter decisions. Some of the best ideas are waiting to, to be discovered in your people's heads. So if you're listening, that signals to somebody that you're open to be influenced. So therefore, people will be more likely to share ideas. And those ideas may be great, but maybe not. But you could probably build on those ideas and create even better ones, therefore making smarter decisions. So what gets in the way of good listening? There are three things, in my opinion. Firstly, not being interested in other people's opinions. Two, thinking you know the answer. And three, wanting to win and be right. If you notice any of these qualities, then they will get in the way of you being a good listener and therefore a good leader. I want to share a listening model with you which will support you in becoming a better listener. This listening model has three levels. Level one is where you're actually not really listening at all. You're only really listening in what is being said in relation to what it means to you. So if I take my other half, Lovisa, for example, and she says to me, oh, I'm feeling stressed with everything I have to do right now. If I'm listening at level one, then I would reply, yeah, feeling it a bit too, got a couple of important client meetings coming up. Now level two listening or active listening, this is where you reflect back or paraphrase what you have heard. So with Louisa again, if she says to me, oh, I'm feeling stressed with everything I have to do right now, level two listening would be something like, oh, it sounds like you're feeling stressed and that there is a lot to do right now. Now, some tips when you're doing level two listening is firstly, it's a very simple yet very powerful skill to do. Yeah, be present, get rid of any distractions. So the phone, email, the door, speak to your PA, keep calls away. Make sure you've got good eye contact. Be curious in your questioning and you can use some of these phrases which I use a lot in my coaching. For example, what I'm hearing and then paraphrase or repeat what you've heard or it sounds like and then paraphrase and repeat again or if I hear you right, paraphrase and repeat. Let me underline this. Very simple but very, very powerful. Now if you want to take your listening to an even deeper level, then you can go to level three or global listening. This is when you're going beyond the words and you're starting to connect with emotion, connecting to tone, what is spoken, and also unspoken concerns of people. So the spoken and unspoken concerns. So if Louisa says to me, oh, I'm feeling stressed with everything I've got to do right now, level three listening would be something like, oh, it sounds like you're feeling stressed and that you want me to be helping out around the house and with the kids a bit more. Now tips for level three listening, be present again, and the key to level three is you actually start reflecting back what you think somebody is feeling. And you can do that by using a phrase like, I'm sensing that. You sound happy, angry, frustrated, and it's not about getting it right. Yeah, and it's also not your responsibility to sort out a person's feelings. So I get a lot of frequently asked questions when I teach listening skills and use the three levels. One of the questions is, can, I, can you use all levels with everyone? The answer to that is, it depends on the relationship. Number two, do you have to work in order of levels when listening? So do you need to go level one, level two, level three all the time? No, it's not a linear model, you can jump. 
Another question I get a lot of the, lot of the time is how do I stop leading people with my ideas? The first key thing really is to be aware that you're doing it. Yeah? And then for me is just save it till the end of the conversation. Have it there and just save it. Who knows what will come up if you just hold it back. And the final thing, do feelings have a place at work? Makes me laugh when people talk about feelings at work. I heard one leader say, I leave feelings to Barry Manilow. In my view, at your peril, understanding feelings will help you understand the person. So how can being a good listener help you as a leader? As I said, you'll become a better leader, you'll be more influential, and you will make smarter decisions. And the final thought, we were born with two ears and one mouth. My invitation to you is that you use them in that proportion. If you want any more content on leadership, go to dennisgoodchild.com. That's all for now.